And we are live. Welcome back with Murphy Mac to another episode of the Fitness Beginner Podcast, where we help you get started on your fitness journey. What is up, folks? Happy. Well, if you're listening to this, you're probably listening on Monday. So hope you have a great week at work. Be careful driving to work today if you're listening to your car. But yeah, y'all start the week off on the right note. Monday is always going to determine how the rest of your week goes. Because if you don't start on Monday, let's be honest, you're probably not going to start the rest of the week. So go ahead and knock it out today. Win the day. That way you can win the week. Because if you don't win Monday, then you can't win the week. Yeah. the reason. So today's topic, we're going to talk about my go-to protein sources. So these are like, we're gonna. I'm going to give you all my top 10 protein sources that I eat on a daily basis. So these are my personal favorites, I guess you could say, that I tend to eat. I, I'm not saying they're the best, the absolute best, um, but they're what I eat, and I think they are good, very, very good sources. And honestly, you could probably argue that some of them are the best, in my opinion, but it's just the ones that I like, that I tend to go to, and I think they'd be very, very beneficial for you as well. But also, I'm going to give you a few little extra, a uh, few extra at the end, just to kind of give you some other options to um Make sure you, because you might like some better, you can switch them in and out and use different ones. That way you're not just limited to these 10. These are just my 10. Personally, there's plenty of protein sources out there that are good. Um, These are just the ones that I typically like to eat. So first, before we get into that though, just what is a protein? Like what is protein and why do we need it? So protein is a nutrient in your food, like meat, dairy, beans, nuts, these all have protein in them, natural sources of protein. And it's made up of small building blocks called amino acids. This is going to help your body grow and help your body repair itself. So they're absolutely essential. Like you, you need protein. Everybody needs protein. No matter what your goal is, build muscle, lose weight, just to live normally, like move. You, you got to have muscle on your frame and you need this protein to help build that and to help maintain it. So why is protein essential for building muscle specifically? When you work out especially strength training, your muscles, they get little tiny like tears in your muscles. So basically when you're working out, you're actually tearing down your muscle. You're not building up your muscle. Working out is not building muscle at all. That's a common misconception. You're not building muscle in the gym. In the gym, you're technically doing the opposite. You're breaking down your muscles. You're putting little micro tears in your muscles. You're tearing them down. And then when you sleep and you eat and stuff, that's when you're recovering. But the protein, what it does is it repairs these tears. It's going to help your muscles grow bigger and grow stronger. You need that protein to help repair. So kind of an example would be like your protein is like a patch. So like think you got a nail in your tire. Well, if you don't fix that nail, you're going to have a hole in your tire. But guess what? If you put a patch on that tire, then guess what? Then it's good to go. So that's kind of how it repairs the tire. It makes it good to go. So that's kind of how protein works. I don't know if that's a good uh, analogy, but. That's just the first one that popped in my head. So yeah, hopefully hopefully you, you got what I was trying to say. The protein helps repair your muscles to help them grow back bigger and stronger. So without enough protein in your body, your body will not be able to properly recover and to properly build the muscle that it needs for your workouts. So you got to get your protein in. Okay, you may be saying, well, I'm not trying to build muscle. I'm trying to lose weight. So why is protein important for losing weight? Well, one, prote- protein is the most satiating macro that you can eat. So it's going to make you feel fuller for longer, which means you're you're less likely to overeat. You're less likely to junk on, I mean, to snack on junk food. You're not going to eat as much because it's going to make you feel full and it's going to make you feel full longer. It also helps keep your muscles strong while you're losing weight because you want to make sure you're losing fat. Like to drop weight, you want to lose fat. You don't want to lose your muscle. So as long as you're eating that protein, it's going to help you maintain that muscle on your body. Like it's going to help hold on to it. That way you're burning, you're burning off more fat and you're not burning off more muscle. Because if you're in an extreme calorie deficit, your body will burn muscle to survive. Your body is a surviving, uh, me- what's the word for it? Your body will do whatever it has to do to survive pretty much. So if it, if it runs out of fat, obviously it's going to start breaking down your muscles and it's going to use that for fuel, for energy. So we don't want to do that. And the best way to kind of stop that from happening is eating enough protein. Make sure your body's maintaining it. That way you lo- you lose in the fat and not the muscle. So yeah, that's kind of what protein is and why we need it. I mean, I don't think, I think y'all already kind of know this for the most part. Um, and I can go ahead and tell you, you're probably not eating enough protein in your diet. Most people, I would say the majority of people are not eating enough protein. If you're not, 
specifically trying to get protein in your diet, then you're definitely not eating enough protein. You need to have more than you think. Most people are severely under eating protein in their diet. In my opinion, I would suggest, just to keep the numbers simple, I would suggest you need to get one gram of protein per pound of your body weight or per pound of your goal body weight. So if you're, so say you're 200 pounds, to make it easy, you could just eat 200 grams of protein or say you're trying to lose weight. Say you're 200 pounds, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to get down to 180. Well, your goal, protein goal should be 180 grams of protein. So that's, that's kind of a lot. If you think about it, you're probably, you're definitely not eating 180 grams of protein. It's kind it does sound a lot, but it, it's not as much as you think. It's not a lot. Trust me, I eat w well over a gram of protein per pound of my body weight uh, pretty easily. It's not as hard as you think. I know it sounds like a lot, but as long as you're prioritizing protein in every single one of your meals, then you can definitely hit this target for sure, especially in your snacks. That's where a lot of people go wrong is they're eating junk, like they're eating snack. When you have a snack, there's nothing wrong with snacking. I like to snack myself, but I make sure my snacks are protein-based snacks. Uh, we'll get into some of those later on in the podcast. But yeah, most of y'all are probably eating some candy or something for a snack that has no protein in it, so you can't get to your protein goal. So the best thing to help you do this is you're probably going to have to eat more than just three meals. And by, and by three meals, I don't mean you need to eat like four or five whole entire meals. I'm saying you need to have one or two other snacks throughout the day that are protein-based, maybe a protein shake, maybe a protein bar. Uh, something something to that effect. We'll get into some of that later. But yeah, if you're not getting at least one gram of protein per pound of your body weight, you're not eating enough protein. Now, there are some different numbers out there that people will go by, but just to keep things simple, it's easy to say a one for one, one gram for one pound. That's pretty basic. I mean, it, a lot of people actually say it's a little lower than that. You don't need technically that much. But then a lot of people actually say if you're trying to lose weight, if you're in a calorie deficit, then you, you need even more protein than that. You need 1.5 to 2 grams per, per pound of your body. It just depends on, on you individually, so it's going to fluctuate. But I like to say, just to keep things simple for everybody, and it's easy to keep track this way, 1 gram protein per pound of your body weight. That's just the basic way to do it. It's pretty simple. If you're doing that, then you're getting plenty of protein in your diet. So yeah, let's go ahead and hop into my top 10 go-to protein sources. Now, these are not going to be the best for everybody, these are gonna these are the best for me, but I think it's a good starting point for most people. You can take some of these and kind of mix and match them how you want. But first and foremost, start it off with the chicken breast. So obviously, chicken breast, everybody knows this is a great protein source. Why is it a great protein source? Well, it's super high in protein and it's super low in calories for what you get. So for a three ounce serving, so for all these, I'm just gonna list out roughly what one serving is. Now Keep in mind, these macros and calories will fluctuate a little bit depending on the brand that you buy, depending on the serving size, depending on where you get it from, things like that. But just these are just general ballpark numbers, average numbers. So just keep that in mind when I go over these because I'm because some of it may be a little off from what you're used to. Uh, and then especially when it comes to like beef and stuff, you have different levels of leanness when it comes to beef. So those numbers are definitely going to change. But just take these numbers as, a, as an average, a rough ballpark area. So chicken breast, number one. So for one serving, about 140 calories for about a three ounce serving, about 26 grams of protein, three grams of fat, and zero grams of carbs. So everybody knows chicken breast, great source of protein because when, when people think bodybuilders, they think chicken. So there's a reason they eat chicken. It's low in calories, it's high in protein. And the good thing about chicken is you can cook it in any way possible. You can cook it in so many different ways. You can bake it. Uh, there's so many, I'm not even gonna get into it. There's so many different ways. There's so many different chicken recipes out there that I like. I mean, chicken's probably gonna be a staple in everybody's diet just because it's one, it's pretty relatively affordable. It's not the most expensive and low in calories, high in protein. So that's gonna be a staple, should be in your diet. And that's gonna lead us to number two, which is the chicken tenderloin. So I know it's technically both chicken, but since they're different parts of the chicken, they do have slightly different calories, slightly different proteins. So I did list them out as, as separate ones. Um, number two, chicken tenderloin. And this is honestly, to me, probably the one I eat the most. Now, keep in mind, these are not in any kind of order. These are just these are just 10. They're not in any kind of order. Um, so chicken tenderloin, probably the one I eat the most. I actually meal prepped these just a minute ago today for my meals this week. But yeah, roughly 100 calories per serving, 19 grams of protein, 2 grams of fat, 0 grams of carbs. So again, those are ballpark numbers. 
those are going to fluctuate a little bit. But chicken tenderloin, again, you can cook it anyway. I actually like these better. They're easier to like, they're easier to meal prep in my opinion because you can just take the whole chicken tenderloin and divide them up. When you have the chicken breast, you got to cut the chicken breast up, divide it up. It's a little more time consuming, but it just depends. So like if I was going to shred the chicken, I would probably use chicken breast to shred it. But if I was just going to say meal prep, like today I did chicken tenderloins. If I was going to meal prep them, I'll just do the tenderloin because it's easier just to separate them because they're about the same size. So instead of having to like chop them up or anything, I just use the whole chicken tenderloin like that. So yeah, I like chicken tenderloins. To me, I, I wouldn't say they taste any better than chicken breast. They're about the same, but some people have a preference. I don't really have a preference, but that leads us to number three. This is another one that I eat a lot. This is probably the number two most, uh, most that I eat. And that is lean ground beef. So I, I specifically eat the 93.7. So it's a 93% lean, 7% fat, I guess is how you would say it. But yeah, lean ground beef. They do have different levels of the ground beef. Um, I suggest you get the lean, the leanest you can get. That's what I would get. Now, taking to my taking uh, consideration, the leaner the beef is, the less flavor it's going to have. It's going to have less of that fat. Uh, it's not going to be. It's not going to taste as good. But in my opinion, I think the the ninety three seven tastes just fine. Like as long as you season it and cook it right, it's still going to taste pretty good. So that's what I get. I mean, it's not. You can technically get leaner than that. Um, but I stay at the 937 just because that's what the store I shop at sells. And that's the leanest I can get there. So that's what I get. But if you want something that tastes a little better, maybe you're on a bulk or something, trying to gain some weight, then maybe you could get the less lean meat um, if that's what you're looking for. That'll taste a little bit better. But yeah, roughly calories about 200 calories, 22 grams of protein, 11 grams of fat, and zero grams carbs. So like I said, the fat number is really going to, change a lot on the ground beef depending on what leanness level you get but yeah lean ground beef you can cook it any way possible literally i i mean obviously you're gonna cook it on the stove but you can mix it mix it and match it in any kind of pro like diet recipe this is super flexible you can make tacos you can make anything out of it i like to make like little taco bowls for my meal prep that's why i use lean ground beef with a lot also lean ground beef with rice really good just mix it up together eat it together. Can't go wrong with that. That's actually what I made a little bit of today too. I made chicken and rice and ground beef and rice. I know that sounds very basic, but it was just super easy and I was trying to do something quick. So that's what I did. Number four, kind of the same as the last one, but lean ground turkey. So I like to eat lean ground turkey too. It's basically, basically the same thing as ground beef, but it's turkey instead. This is actually a little better on the calories and the fat um, than the lean ground beef. So if you're, on, if you're cutting, you may lean more towards ground turkey than you would ground beef it just kind of depends i like to do both just to mix it up so i'm not eating the same thing over and over again in my opinion the turkey does not taste as good as beef but you may like turkey better it's up to you they're both good to me but whatever you like better or if you like both try them both but yeah calories 170 protein 22 grams fat 8 grams carb zero so if you're a turkey person these are, this is a good option if you like ground beef better you may want to go that route or if you like me and you don't care, you can have both. Number five, this is one for breakfast that I, I really, really like, and that's eggs. Can't go wrong with eggs. I know back in the day, eggs used to get a bad rip. They used to say you get like high cholesterol and stuff from eggs. But in my opinion, that's all That's all mumbo jumbo. Eggs are like a superfood. Eggs got so many micronutrients in it that it's unreal. Like eggs is probably the most bang for your book bang for your calorie meal protein source that you can get eggs are, are like they should be a staple in anybody's diet in my opinion if you're not if you don't if you can eat like da uh, not dairy eggs are not dairy what, what's the word i'm looking for whoever can't some people can't eat eggs i can't think of it but yeah you should eat eggs i mean they're a superfood in my opinion like they they mark all the boxes off calories for one large egg 70 calories protein six grams fat five grams carbs one gram so if you want to have less fat, you know, you can take the, the yolk out and just eat the egg whites. It's also a good option. You can buy cartons of egg whites now. I actually do that too. That's a great option too. It has less fat in it, but has a lot of protein. So that's a good source too. But yeah, eggs, again, you can cook them in so many different ways. There's so many different options when it comes to eggs. I mean, I love them. One of my favorite like little go-to meals when I don't have nothing to eat is an egg sandwich. I love an egg sandwich. Egg sandwiches are fire. And a little pro tip. That you may not know about eggs is 
you can cook eggs in the microwave. Yeah. This is my go-to way of cooking eggs just because it's so quick. It's so easy. It's so simple. All you do is just like whisk up an egg in a bowl, just like a regular bowl that you would eat out of. Like you would put cereal or something in. Um, you can put like a splash of milk in there or a splash of water just to make it a little thicker. Or you could even use like heavy, heavy whipping cream or whatever if you wanted to to make it even fluffier. But yeah, just pop for one egg. You need about one minute in the microwave. Or it's going to depend a little bit on your microwave, but about one egg, one minute. If you add two eggs, obviously you want to go up two minutes. But yeah, you can pop that bag on the microwave and it'll cook it. This is my favorite way. I mean, it's probably it, it probably it don't taste the best this way, but it's super quick. If you're in a hurry, or if you don't like feel like messing up a bunch of dishes and stuff, trying to get the pan and stuff out to cook them, this is the best way to do it, in my opinion. I love doing this way. And when you cook it in the bowl, it fits perfect on a slice of bread. Just saying. So if you want to eat an egg sandwich, that's the go. That's my go-to way of doing it. But yeah, eggs, super food. You should be eating these. Number six, this is kind of like a snack, but also you could eat it as like a side or something if you wanted to, but Greek yogurt. So plain Greek yogurt, you can't get the non-fat uh, option, but yeah, calories about 100, protein 20 grams, fat zero, carb six. Protein yogurt is, or not protein yogurt, Greek yogurt is a great option. It's pretty low in calories, high in protein. I like to eat it as a snack. So I'm gonna tell you a little hack that I like to do. If you know those little Mio flavorings that you can put in your water, it comes in like a little squirt bottle. That you squirt in your water for flavoring. I'm telling you, get you some plain Greek yogurt, squirt a little bit of that in there and mix it up. It literally makes it taste like like any kind of flavored yogurt. Like a like a go-gurt or something you would have as a kid that has all kinds of sugar in it. Because like, let me tell y'all, regular yogurt, like flavored yogurt is not good for you at all. It's got all kinds of sugar and junk in it. Don't get that. Don't get that junk. You literally get the plain Greek yogurt that has no flavor, that tastes honestly pretty bad if you eat it by itself. And then you can mix it up different ways. But yeah, I'm telling you, get the little Mio flavor. And you can even, I even get like the great value brand and just squirt it in there. That junk's fire. Also, you can get you some fruit or something. So I have a bunch of blueberries in my freezer. So I'll put the little Mio flavor in there, put some blueberries in there, and literally just eat it out the bowl. That junk is it's so good. I'm telling you, don't be sleeping on the Greek yogurt. You can also buy, they have a lot of like protein branded Greek yogurts now. So I, I, the main one you'll see, I think you pronounce it Oikos. It's O-I-K-O-S. Oikos, I think is how you say it. But yeah, they have like protein Greek yogurt uh, probably at any grocery store. So you can even get that. And they actually flavor them. Though You can buy those flavored and they don't have a bunch of sugar and junk in it. So those are good options as well. And they're very, very high in protein. I like to have this. It's like a little snack right before I go to bed. A little something sweet when you put that flavoring in there. It's good. You can also make, make it different ways. You can put protein powder in it. You can put the powdered peanut butter in there. Put honey in there you can mix all kinds of things any kind of fruit in there i've seen people do some crazy concoctions put a little protein powder and some cinnamon in there there's different ways you can do it i like i personally like the mio and the fruit in it but you can do it how you want i've done it several different ways number seven well let me skip i'm gonna skip that one and come back to that one at the end we'll go to then all right we'll go to this one the next one this is going to be different this is fish this is going to be salmon so salmon specifically um I actually didn't eat a lot of salmon until my bodybuilding show, and this was actually one of my meals that my coach made me eat. Well, he didn't make me eat, but like one of my the meals that my coach provided, and I actually really, really like salmon. We have an air fryer, so I'll just take salmon out, pop that bad boy in the air fryer, throw some seasoning on it, and it was good. I literally would just put like salt, pepper, and Tony Saturies on it and put it in the air fryer, and man, that junk is so good. But yeah, salmon's got a real good, uh, it's got a lot of omega-3 fatty acids in it that you need, so you need some fish in your diet as well. So calories, 180, protein, 22, fat, nine, carbs, zero. So I know not everybody's a fan of salmon. Salmon does kind of have like a very distinct taste. So if you don't like salmon, obviously this is not one you're going to want to try, but I actually turned out I really like salmon. So I'm, I'm probably going to keep this in my diet, try to work it in a little bit when I can. You need, you need those uh, fatty acids in your diet. Those are good for as far as omega-3s go. Next one, this is fish as well, tuna. But me, I don't just eat like all tuna or like the actual tuna. I, buy, I like to buy those little tuna packs. Or you can either get it in a can or you can buy those little packs. I don't know what they're called. They got several different brands now. But they literally have like a little pack, like a little pouch of tuna that you can buy at the store. And they got different flavors. There's all kinds of different flavors. But yeah, these are great little snacks. They're normally about 100 calories, about 20 grams of protein, one gram of fat, no carbs. Uh, these are a great little snack. You put it on a cracker, put it on a piece of toast. I don't know, whatever you want to put it on. I just like to eat them straight out the bag. Like the flavor ones, 
they're good by itself and they're very cheap you can get those little packs for like a dollar at walmart and they last like forever like i don't think they really expire they stay they stay good for a while you don't like refrigerator or nothing honestly i don't know how they're good not in the refrigerator <laughs> but yeah you can put the tuna in this little packets and they're good to go they're a good little snack put it on i'll tell you put it put it on a cracker they're really good i wish i remember the brand i can't remember the brand um but i know i know walmart has their own version of it um and they also make chicken like that too they make chicken in those little packets too that's also a good option so we're gonna go back to the next one this would be number nine i believe which is whey protein powder so this is a given if you're working out you probably got some kind of protein powder I like to take away specifically. All right, these numbers are really, really going to change depending on what brand you get. But calories roughly 100 to 150. Uh, protein anywhere from 20 to 25 grams. Fat could be anywhere from 1 to 5 grams ish. And then carbs anywhere from 0 to 10. I mean, that those are going to fluctuate a lot depending on the brand that you get. But yeah, whey protein, protein powder is a great source of protein because, well, again, very low calories for the amount of protein that you're getting. And protein powder is very, very easy to eat. So if you're already full because you're eating a lot of food, but you still need protein in your diet, a whey, to, whey protein is going to be a very good way to get some extra protein into your diet. It's also a very convenient source of protein. You don't have to keep it refrigerated. You can just whip it up in a shake, and you can drink it whenever throughout the day. Like if you, if you need it for after your workout, you can literally make it up before you go to the gym, and that way it's ready to go. You can drink it right after the gym or... You can take the jug with you and make it wherever you're going. I don't know. It's very, very convenient. You can do, you can eat it. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to make protein. Like you can use protein powder as well. You can cook with it. You can make all kinds of different food, like protein recipes with it. One of my favorite ways is to make a protein, like an actual protein shake, like a smoothie that you put in the blender. So you just put some ice, protein powder, put some fruit in there, either water or milk, whatever you want your base to be. Um, I love to make like a protein shake in a blender like that. It's a good way to do it. It's almost like a fruit smoothie. Put a bunch of different kinds of fruit in there or whatever kind of fruit you like. Some protein powder in there and that's a good way to have it. Or you can also make pretty much anything with protein powder. I mean, it works. You can bake with it. You can bake anything you can think of. You can make, make you can just throw some protein powder in and make it. It works just fine. So yeah, protein, protein powder, whey protein is specifically going to be a very good source of protein and very convenient. So that's definitely a staple. Honestly, I have a shake after every single one of my workouts. That's just the way I do it. I always have one. And last but not least, my number 10 source of protein, and I use this as a snack, as a convenient way to get protein in my diet, and that is protein bars. So I love protein bars, and just because of their simplicity and the, the convenience that they offer. So like, I like to snack. I really do. I'm just like y'all. I like to snack too. And to keep myself from snacking on junk food and just tearing up a bag of chips or something, I like to have protein bar bars available because it solves like my sweet tooth because a lot of protein bars, they have chocolate on them. They have, you can get caramel, chocolate, whatever you want. You can get it in a protein version. So that's why I really like these. Um, yeah, some of them can have some sugar in them. Some of them can have a lot of calories in them. Uh, some of them don't have a lot of protein in them. So you got to be careful which ones you get. But yeah, roughly on the macros, calories roughly anywhere from like 180 to 250, even up into 300, some of them for calories. Protein, anywhere from, I mean, they got them from 10 to 25. I wouldn't get any that have only 10 grams of protein. I would try to stay up in that 20 grams of protein range just so you're getting a good amount of protein for the calories. Fat, around 7 grams. Carbs, anywhere from 20 to 25 grams. So there's like a, there's this little rule that I like to use on my protein bars is, it's like, I don't know, I don't know if it has a name, but take the amount of protein that your bar has, add a zero to it. So basically you're multiplying it by 10. And then if that number is larger than the amount of calories that's in that bar, then that's a good bar. Like that's a good protein source. So for example, say your bar has 20 grams of protein. So if I add a zero to that or multiply it by 10, that's 200 grams. I mean, that's, the number's 200. So say the bar only has 180 calories in it. Well, that's a good protein bar because it has that 200 is higher than the 180 calories. Hopefully that makes sense what I said. But that's a good little hack that y'all can use to make sure you're getting enough bang for your buck when it comes to protein versus calories in a protein bar. And really, you could use that hack for like anything, really. You could use it for any food source. But I like to use it for my snacks, especially that way I'm not just eating a bunch of 
high calorie snacks and not getting enough protein in my diet. So yeah, just add a zero to the protein. And if that number is higher than the calories, then that's a good, that's a good snack for you. That's what I like to use. So yeah, those are my top 10 go-to protein, protein sources. Those are not the only protein sources. Yeah, I obviously eat other stuff too. I just, they're not like staples in my diet. They're not what I'm eating all the time, but I will give you a few extra ones that I think are good substitutes or good options that I also eat sometimes as well. So one of them is ground chicken. So you can get chicken grounded just like ground beef or ground turkey. And you can cook it the same way you would do beef and mix it. You can mix and match it with anything you would make with ground beef or ground turkey. So ground chicken, that's a good option as well. It's going to be about 120 calories, 21 grams of protein, 3 grams of fat, 0 carbs. Another one, a little bit higher in calories, but still a good option, is chicken thighs. So have a little bit different flavor. taste. They have a little bit different, different taste than chicken than the chicken tenderloins or chicken breasts, but chicken thighs, they're going to be a little higher in calories. Uh, they have actually they're gonna have higher fats. So if you're on a bulk, this may be a better option for you. If you're trying to lose weight, this may not be as best of an option. But yeah, calories about 170, protein 19 grams, fat 9 grams, and then carb zero. So chicken thighs, another good protein source. A lot of that's going to come down to preference. If you like the taste of thighs better than the breast, then hey, do what you got to do. Number 13, another good one. This is kind of like the Greek yogurt, which is cottage cheese. So I don't eat a ton of cottage cheese, but I have made some recipes with it and it, and you can't even like taste the cottage cheese once you mix it up so that's a good one a lot of people make like little recipes with cottage cheese and it's a good source of protein so 90 calories 14 grams of protein 2.5 grams of fat three grams of carbs you can kind of mix and match it in in recipes and stuff to to make it taste better if you're not if you're not a cottage cheese fan i would say i'm not the biggest fan of just the raw taste of it but it is good when you mix it with other things i've made some some pretty good recipes with it. Some people like to just eat it straight up. I've seen people just straight up eat it out of the container. That's not that's not personally for me, but you may like the taste of it. Another good source is just nuts. Nuts in general got a lot of protein in them, but you have to be careful when you eat nuts. The nuts normally have a very high calorie ratio to protein ratio. I mean, yeah, they're pretty high in protein, but you're also eating a lot of calories too when it comes to nuts. So be careful when it comes to nuts, because you will overdo it. Like, don't just get a big old bag of nuts and just eat straight out the bag, because you will overeat them, I promise, because that's what I do. I overeat them. So I have to take, I literally have to take, if I, if we buy a big bag, I have to take it and pour it into, like, a separate container, a smaller container. That way, when I eat all of them, they're gone. That's it. But yeah, protein's good. I mean, if you, so, if you have a mixed bag of, pro, uh, mixed bag of nuts, calories about 170, protein only 5 grams, Fats, 15 grams, and then carbs are six. So you have to be careful when you eat those, but that is also a good option when it comes to protein. Also, nuts are a good snack as well. So if you don't like Greek yogurt or cottage cheese or whatever, or protein bars, nuts are a good option. Also, beef jerky. Beef jerky is a great option, a great snack. Pretty high in protein, pretty low in calories. Uh, I love beef jerky as well. That's a, that's a good go-to snack for me as well. Um, but yeah, so those are some options. Also, you got to think of like any kind of steak. Steak's going to be good, high in protein, but some steaks are going to be higher in fat. So like a ribeye, it's going to have a lot of fat on it. So you got to be careful when it comes to that. I, I, I actually eat a lot of steak too. I love steak, but it's not something, it's not, it just didn't make my top 10 because I don't eat it as much as these other ones. Because steak, let's be honest, steak's a little more expensive. So I like to treat steak as kind of like a luxury thing. It's like when I go out to eat, when I go to dinner or something, I like to get a steak. I don't typically meal prep steak just because it's, it's more expensive. It's not as easy to meal prep. But yeah, I, I like to use that as kind of like a, if I'm going to splurge on the weekend, take my wife out to dinner or something, we like ribeyes. She's, she loves the fat on, on steaks. I don't know why. It's kind of gross, but she literally will eat the fat on a ribeye. Like I will cut it off mine and give it to her and she'll eat it. Like, sorry, Bailey, for exposing you, but that junk's weird. I don't like that. I, <laughs> I give it to her every time. She loves it. I don't know. It's weird. Y'all let me know. Are y'all are y'all a fat guy or y'all cut it off? Like y'all eat the fat or do y'all cut it off? I'm the one that cuts it off. My wife eats it. So which one of y'all? Which one of y'all? I ain't gonna lie. The ribeye is the best steak. I'm just gonna be honest. And that's and I, th and I think it is because it has all that fat on it and it makes it taste a little better. But once you cook it, you can cut that fat off. You ain't gotta eat the fat. It just it makes it taste a little better when it's cooking and stuff. So yeah, that's my top 10 go-to protein sources. Y'all let me know down in the comments what's your favorite one. 
out of these that I've mentioned. But yeah, other than that, y'all meal prep you some food and meal prep some of these options I just gave y'all. These are good options. These are not all the options. There's other sources of protein out there, but these are just ones that I like to eat and that's pretty much a staple in my diet. Make sure you get enough protein in your diet. If you ain't eating one gram of protein per pound of, uh, per pound of your body weight, then you need to get try to aim for that. Try to get to that number, and this will help you when it comes to build muscle. It's also going to help you when it comes to losing weight. Protein is very, very important for everybody, literally all ages, male, female, old, young. It don't matter what your goal is, what you're doing. You need protein in your diet, so eat some more. Prioritize it in your diet. Eat it first. Eat your protein first, and this is a little hack because it also make you fuller quicker, so you won't eat as much. But, yeah, that's all I got for y'all today. Y'all have a great week. Win the day. I love y'all. Peace, love, protein. We out.